I am a supervisor of cemetery. I'm waiting for a while, around about 19 years. In the old days, we used to bury around about four a month. But now, we are burying a lot, around about 17 and 18 a month. The young people. The lot is a young people. Every weekend, and uh, when I say every weekend, Saturdays and Sundays, there are funerals around here. And uh, almost all of them are of young people. We've kept on, you know, collecting and collecting this data since 1989. Just to give you an idea, in, in 1989 we identified 30 new HIV positive carriers and we became aware of five AIDS related deaths. Uh, last year, for the calendar year 1997, uh, we recorded 5,234 new HIV carriers and we recorded 414 AIDS deaths. What we've learned from our experience in the area that we've been looking after, uh, statistically speaking, is the slow, steady increase and the fact that in the rural areas there's not a town that's not affected or infected. Port Elizabeth is by no means the worst uh, in South Africa. I think if you look at the, uh, at the Port Elizabeth fact, if you look at the factual AIDS cases, and you look at the growth rate in factual AIDS cases, AIDS deaths, and you look at the factual AIDS deaths, last year 414, uh, this year 130 up to May, uh, projections of nearly close to 600 by the end of the year. Not significant in their own right, not huge numbers uh, in their own right, but it's the growth rates that are important to look at. And when you take those growth rates, it gives some idea of what is coming down the road. The level of HIV infection is higher than even those horrifying projections of 10 years back. A group of academics from Rhodes University's East London campus analyzed the data. They found a typically African path of infection. The virus spreads through heterosexual sex or by descent, from HIV-positive mothers to their babies. They found stark regional concentrations of HIV, as in places like Warmer Township, hemmed in by suburban PE and the airport, and close to an army base. In this uh, particular case, the prognosis is, is, is poor. And there's already a fairly high, le high level incidence of HIV. Um, I don't want to say exactly how high, because the exact estimate is, is but I'll, t I'll tell you that in some uh, streets there are more HIV positive cases than there are ratepayers. The children are going to be heirs to this. Or how are we going to deal with them? Are we going to have to have big orphanages, orphan villages, orphan centers? Not all children will be left behind. One local feature of the disease is that little girls also die of AIDS. All over Africa there, is this, there have been studies uh, about virgins and the belief uh, that uh, you can have a cure uh, for HIV if you sleep with a virgin. The African studies show that 9 to 15 year old girls are six times more likely to be HIV positive than boys of the same age. And what I found in this uh, study, in this region, that we have a figure closer to eight times more likely. With all of this information around, the level of ignorance is something to behold. Everybody here talks the talk. They know about condoms and testing and not sleeping around. But no one knows anyone who's HIV positive. On some of these streets, Every other family has somebody facing the prospect of AIDS. They all keep chup still. AIDS is not good. Because if somebody has got it, AIDS is going to die. It's going to die? Yes. Yeah. Right. Uh. Do you know anyone who's contacted? Oh, uh -uh, my love. Uh -uh. So Even know? HIV, I don't want anyone. Uh -uh. If they hear about they have AIDS, he or she don't want to die alone. He spread it. They tell the story, mm -hmm. oh, but they don't, they spread it, they want mm -hmm. to spread it. Mm -hmm. That's because if I hear about it, I have AIDS, I don't think I would accept I have to die alone. So you want to tell, yeah. you want to tell your spouse? I'll, I'll tell my husband or my boyfriend, and what I'll do, secondly, I'll go to another boyfriend. In these parts, dying in company is a sure thing largely because of the absolute secrecy surrounding AIDS. 
This is a very rare document. It is the only one in Warmer's burial files to list AIDS as the cause of death, although many others almost certainly took this knowledge to the grave. You see someone going to the clinic, if he's HIV or she's HIV positive, the nurses are hiding him or her. The nurses or the government should have the, the place for them to, to, be away, to, yeah, to be away from the community. Like a village? Yeah, like, or, so like, like inside, like a camp. Or. They think of, of, of AIDS. They, 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 they think AIDS is about death, which is why I, uh, they, they, they treat people like us as less than human beings. Well, I, I am HIV positive, having been diagnosed in 1991. And uh, when I was diagnosed, uh, I, was, I was actually looking for employment. And when I was found to be HIV positive, I was told, I'm going to die in three months' time and therefore cannot even be given the job I was applying for. I'm supposed to be in the phase of AIDS now because I am in my seventh year of being HIV positive and uh, my CD4 count is about 300. But I don't regard myself as, as, as AIDS. Here I am, I, 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 I read, I write, I, I, I exercise, I work, I do everything, I'm physically fit. Lawrence Dojo runs a support group for people with AIDS. There are 10 members from Warmer and nine of them are school kids. They tell him stories of being forced to eat alone or sleep apart from the family, and above all, of being told to keep their illness secret. And that's exactly why we have these devastating statistics now. Because people have been saying, no, it, it belongs somewhere else, not, not with us, not with me, not in this town, not in Johannesburg or in Devon or in kwazulu Natal, not in our township or not in our... We are too, we are too better off to, to be having AIDS. There are other African uh, societies which are much more aggressive in confronting HIV. And we've had unfortunate uh, uh, projects like Serafina 2, which have been a distraction more than a help in promoting HIV awareness. So what I would suggest is we must just begin again with HIV awareness until such time as HIV has a face for the South African population and for its policy makers. In May, I was in Ivory Coast. What I witnessed there was a very sorry state in that some, some families are, are run by 15, 16 or 17 year old kids because their parents have died of AIDS. And, uh, and there's a lot of, 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 in the people are beginning to care for, for people with AIDS in that they have exactly witnessed the the devastating effects AIDS can have. We haven't started to do anything. We haven't started to do anything to that sort. And in fact, with, with our communities in here in South Africa, we have even lost Ubuntu in that it was traditional for, for, for especially African people to care for a person who's in a problem. Every weekend, and uh, when I say every weekend, Saturdays and Sundays, there are funerals around here and uh, almost all of them are of young people and uh, in most of them people don't know the person what the person died of he just went sick and uh, lost weight and had all some blisters or whatever and died 15 percent of, of, of the people uh, died before their fifth birthday um, the remainder, the average age of death, is about 32 for males and about 30 for females. This is the decade of HIV. The next decade will be the fully blown AIDS decade. When it started off in 89, we were told, don't dramatize, don't frighten the people. Well, I'm sorry, to me it's absolutely frightening. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It was 15 last month, 17 in this month. No, no. Before it was not like this. It was not like this time. 